Ani, MD Right Selection to introduce our speaker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's the end of the day. I'll try that again. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Fantastic. Thank you very much. What, where do, where, where, thank you very much for the introduction. As my colleague shared, there's no better way to introduce the founder of mind mapping than through a mind map. One could go through standing behind here and read some linear notes. We could read bullet points, but I would be um, shot by Tony Buzan if I introduced him in that way. So I'm going to invite, um, I believe, the first slide on the screen. As you can see, this is a, a mind map of Tony Buzan himself. I'll give you some of the highlights of these branches. And I'm very sure that when the mind map is taken away, your memory and recall of what's on the screen will be that much more than if I read some notes. As you can see, he's an author of over 150 books. He's spoken and his books are available in 150 languages, sorry, his 150 countries. The books are available in 40 different languages. His passion for poetry is across the board, universal passion. He's an educator of children, adults, governments, global leaders. My daughter, at the age of eight, started mind mapping and has had a profound change in her education at that age. She's already it's now 13, but she's been mind mapping for five years. And the subjects she found boring have suddenly become very interesting, and her grades made a, made a big difference. And that's where the best way to start is with, with, with our children. He's a sportsman, a physical coach for the Olympics, Aikido, a swimmer, wherever he travels across the world, Everywhere in the world, he swims on an every single day. He is committed to it, taking care of his health in swimming. Intelligence there itself is the editor of Mensa, Sipnasia.net, MixQ Creativity. Media, over 200 million people have seen him in Europe on TV. 300 million people in America. Over 500 million people in Asia. 3 billion on radio. I mean, that speaks leaps and bounds of his credibility as a speaker and the importance of mind mapping. He's been an advisor to several governments across the world and to several Fortune 500 companies as well. Last but not least, you have several achievements, as you can see. The Lifetime Achievement Award in the year 2000, um, a medal in Avicenna, Golden Leader Gavel Award, speed reading, memory, here's a world memory championship that takes place across the world. And last but not least, as I say once again, he's a nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize. That itself is globally renowned. So without further ado, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Tony Buzan. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Your voice is an instrument, so please make sure you use it. And today we're going to spend half an hour plus introducing what a mind map is and who you are and what human resource actually means. How many of you are HR people. So all of you. So how many of you know what human resource means? <laughs> I can see and hear blank. <laughs> so we're going to start to investigate. And by the way, I am delighted to be here. I am visiting India more and more, and I will be here again and again and again and again. So I'll be meeting you in different situations, but it will all be to do with intelligence and thinking and the meaning 
of human resource. And so let's find out who we are. I'm going to uh, ask you to raise your hands and let me know. How many of you here know what a mind map is? Okay. How many of you do not know what a mind map is? So vast majority. And so the team here is human resource and it's ignorant. And ignorant simply means I do not know. Which is how we are when we're born mostly. And when we don't know, that means we can then be curious. So ignorance is a clean, good thing. And I'm delighted that you are honest in saying, I don't know. So within this 45 minutes, uh, we will find out what a mind map is and why. Why? Uh, a few more questions. How many of you here are artists? So about six of you. How many of you are not artists? Okay, so a vast majority. How many of you are scientists? How many of you are not scientists? So vast majority. How many of you are poets? Poets? How many of you are not poets? Vast majority. <clears throat> How many of you are teachers? How many of you are not teachers? Okay. <clears throat> How many of you loved, and I mean loved, your homework from school? When you were in school, how many of you loved to do especially your extra homework? <laughs> so very, very, very few. I will tell you that when I was in school, there were four things that I and my best friends and all the colleagues in my school, when I was seven, there were four things we loved. The first thing we loved, ding, 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 ding. What was that? Yeah, the first playtime. Second thing we loved, ding, 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 ding. Lunch break. <laughs> and you all knew it. So think about that. You all knew it. The third thing we loved was ding, 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 and that was the afternoon playtime. And the fourth thing we liked and the thing we liked the most was ding, 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 ding. What was that? Go home. Get out. You know, escape. Go into nature. So here we are in Delhi. This is an international group itself, and yet it's pretty well unanimous. So it's not India, it's global. And I have now checked more than 50 countries and ding, 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 ding is what everybody loved. Everybody. Therefore, play is pretty important. And you, now as adults, have to be serious. You have to be serious. You've got to work 24-7. You've got to be proper. You've got to be logical. You've got to be rational. You've got to do your job well. You better keep your job serious. 
Now, when you go back to the Greek philosophers, how many of you have read any of the Greek philosophers? Anybody uh, read Socrates? Anybody read Aristotle, Aristoteles? I highly recommend it. <laughs> because they and Hippocrates, you know, the inventor of the modern medicine, which now blends with Indian medicine, Chinese medicine, Australian Aboriginal medicine, the North American Indian and Inuits all invented their own medicines and when they combine, wonderful. <clears throat> Socrates, Hippocrates, Aristotle said, there is nothing that you will ever see that is so serious. There's nothing more serious than a child playing. You will never see anything more serious. How many of you love to play? How many of you like parties and celebrations and festivals? Right? It's human. It's human. So now we're going to look at why mind map? What is a mind map? And what is human resource? And tomorrow I'm going to be doing a master class for an hour and a half, going deeply into everything that we introduce for you here. But let's go straight into it. Let me ask you another question. What do you think my, Tony Buzan's first, what's my prime language? <clears throat> Take two. Let's try this again. Tony Buzan, what do you think my first prime language is? Mine. Kids, if you were five years old, and I teach a lot of them, and I ask a question like that, do you know what I get? So, so, me, me, me. Every one of them. And look at you. Dunk. and you're all in human resource. <laughs> poor, poor old human resource. <laughs> How many of you have graduated from a college or university of some sort? <laughs> so now, ladies and gentlemen, you are beginning to discover what human resource means and what it isn't and how it is misused, and I mean really misused. The vast majority of you are terrified, petrified. You do not want to appear stupid. And if you say the wrong thing, everybody will know that you made a mistake. And so you're going to be... <laughs> All children <clears throat> guess. All the great geniuses estimate. So you can find out what the probable futures are going to be. So let me try this again. <clears throat> Imagine that you're five years old. And I'm asking you a question. What do you think Tony's prime first language is? <laughs> okay, so we got a vast majority English. We got a couple of Japanese, <laughs> Spanish. Okay, so now I would like you to say it aloud individually. This is going to be like a government voice vote. Okay. So you're going to say 
my primary language is blah, and just say it aloud so that everybody can hear the vote. So you'll know what the prime language or is are. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So your personal first language is? <laughs> okay. So we've got a mini United Nations, <laughs> but we've got a lot of Hindi in there as well. And I am saying no. And no, 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 no. So you've been thinking about that. Body language? So <laughs> so why don't we find out? I'm going to check. That, by the way, is a linear introduction of me. <laughs> Pretty boring, isn't it? Okay. So I'm now going to ask you to imagine. <clears throat> And Albert Einstein, among people, said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is more important than knowledge. How many of you, by the way, daydream? How many of you daydream? You've become honest. <laughs> and I see some of you putting both hands up. <laughs> How many of you enjoy your daydreams? Unanimous? Unanimous. So we are now finding out who we are. In schools, when you are daydreaming, is that considered good or bad? <laughs> and you all knew that. So this is a bad group. <laughs> Hardly any artists, poets, scientists. So imagine that the government was you. How many of you have kids? Like more than 90% of you. So imagine that you are the government and this government is going to run your kids in the future. And this government has hardly any poets, few scientists, hardly any poets at all, whole bunch of daydreamers, a bad government, and you hold the future in your hands. So let's now play with your imagination, because now we know point number one in your lesson today is daydreaming is good. Not only is it good, Without daydreaming, you die. And it takes you about a day and a half, and you're gone, if you don't daydream. So back into human resource, think about it. You are now no longer a bad group. You're a good group, because you all daydream, and you all love it. And Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge. So you're going to play an imagination game. Uh, I want you to imagine uh, that your brain is like a super, super, super computer. I'm going to give you a piece of data, just one piece of data. And when I give it to you, I want you immediately to close your eyes and daydream it, whatever. I give you, play with it, and check how long did it take my brain to access that piece of data or data, whichever way you like it. What did the computer give me? What did I get? And anything else with it? Okay, team? Sure. I'm calling you a team, by the way, because a group, a group is random selection of people. A team is what? 
Yeah, it's a group that is one with the same goal. And you all have the same goal. All you want to do is understand your brain, to learn how to think, to learn how to develop your cortical skills, your multiple intelligences, to discover what resource you are. Okay, so get your computer ready. As soon as I give you the piece of data, immediately close your eyes, check how quickly, you know, how long did it take, what did it give me, anything else. Keep your eyes closed for about 20, 30 seconds, so play with it. Then you can open them, <clears throat> open them and we'll move into the next stage. All right, team, are we ready? Yes. Piece of data I want you to access is monkey. Really play with it. Give it 10 more seconds. Okay, open your eyes. <clears throat> quickly, with groups of two or maybe three, just quickly discuss with your neighbors, tell them who you are, but just say how long it took, what did the computer give me, and anything else with it. Okay, starting now. All right, team. So, first question. And again, I'd like you to vote mouth. First question. How long did it take your computer to access that piece of data? And it's all the same. You're saying the same thing. Some of you are saying, you know, half a second. Quick, fast, immediately, just like that. Now think about it. How did you do that? You, according to contemporary science, you could not have done it. There is no supercomputer even close to being able to instantaneously access a random piece of data. To have it all programmed in linearly, digitally, very slow. But you do it, wham! And the database in there is how big? Ta da! Huge, huge, and that's you, and you did it just like that. How many of you would like to get a science Nobel Prize? <laughs> it's an easy thing to do, easy thing to do, because all you have to do 
is just to say, by the way, I randomly access a piece of data instantaneously, and this is how my brain did it. And you will get a Nobel Prize because everybody wants to know. And you will get a Nobel Prize just like that. It's so vital. And yet every one of you did it just like that. Every one of your children does it exactly the same. Every one of your friends and colleagues, the same. So now begin to think of the human resource. If you're a human resource manager, you're not somebody designed to be organizing retirement and pensions and retaining. You are managing as many geniuses as there are people in your organization. So human resource is a much greater thing than it has been thought. So <clears throat> when you were accessing it, what did the computer give you? Did it give you a nice printout saying M-O-N-K-E-Y space A space A-N-I-M-A-L? Is that what it gave you? What did it give you? Say it aloud. Image, 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 picture, 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 picture. Images, pictures is what you got. And what else did you get? I mean, was there anything else? You, you got an image? Anything else? <laughs> How many, lots of people saying colors. How many of you got colors? So nearly all of your colors. What else did you get? Sounds. 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 How many of you got banana? <laughs> so how many of you got one monkey? How many of you got one or more monkeys? Ta-da. How many of you got a tribe? How many of you got a tribe of monkeys? So a few of you. How many of you had brown as the main color for the monkey? How many of you got red in the context of a monkey? <laughs> so we know what you were thinking. <laughs> How many of you enjoyed playing with that idea. How many of you enjoyed playing with it? Play. And that is what your brain did. So the two key words you have just discovered are image, i.e. image picture with color, and associations, connections, and location. How many of you had a monkey in a zoo? How many of you had a monkey in any kind of cage? Good. How many of you had a monkey in a jungle? How many of you had a monkey in a tree? How many of you had a tribe in a particular jungle with them moving? So what have you discovered? you have discovered something that is in the process of changing the world. <clears throat> Imagination, association, colors, and the radiant nature of it. Not your linear notes, not your monochromatic notes. So, that is the human language. The human language is from the brain. It is radiant. It is imagination. 
association that is the human language, not English, not Hindi, not Mandarin, not Argentinian Espanol, not Brazilian Portuguese. That is the language. And the spoken language is a subroutine. Now, is that a good idea or not? It's wonderful. It's a subroutine. So your spoken language, when it's really developed and good, it has imagination and association in it. And then you become a writer, a poet, a storyteller, a philosopher. And that is the human language. And therefore, <clears throat> the Indian people speak the same language as those people born in China. The people in Kenya speak the same language as you do. From now on, you will never ever in your life meet a foreigner. No such thing. Simply a person who has as their first spoken language blah blah blah, but they all speak the prime language. So now, think again about the human resource. It's radiant, isn't it? It's radiant, not linear. Not list-like. And watch people talking when they are stuck in their language. Well, let me tell you many things I need to tell you. The first one is this one. And it's all list, 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 list. Or word, word. And from now on, use the human language. How many words do you think there are, i.e., what is the vocabulary of the average university graduate? How many, how many thousand words? 10,000 words. 10, words is the mean average. 15 is if they're really good, 15,000. Shakespeare had 24,000. So words, 24,000. How many images do you have in your head? Unlimited. Unlimited. That's your vocabulary. That's your vocabulary. Just a few million words, i.e. vocabulary. And the vocabulary is colorful image with its connections. So how much better are you than if you have only 10,000 words in your vocabulary? Think how limiting that truly is. Measuring everything in words, numbers, not the way to do it. So you now know that every child thinks like that, every baby does. Babies are wonderful. Do you have a, um, a large piece of paper? Anywhere, I need a large piece of paper, which you may not get back. As long as you don't get it back. Is that okay? Is it okay if I don't give it back to you? It says I've only done seven minutes and 34 seconds. <laughs> Welcome to the digital age. <clears throat> I started, according to my ancient timepiece, at half, 
5.32. So what time am I supposed to finish? <laughs> 10 minutes and we will finish. So now imagine I'm a baby. And the human race is often described as fundamentally violent, warlike, aggressive, dangerous, and the evidence is with babies. I'm a baby. You've given me this piece of paper. Are you going to get it back? No. So let's check, and this is every baby, right? This is the proof of the destruction of the planet. <laughs> Is that what they do? The proof of destruction. It's exactly the opposite. That brilliant brain who speaks that language simply says in that vocabulary, so what is this stuff? Musical instrument? No, no. Worth anything? Any economic exchange value? <laughs> no. Better check the engineering tensile mechanical strength. <laughs> no, weak stuff. I, wa I wonder if this is edible. <laughs> Could definitely eat that. Let me try it. Yeah, now, try that musical instrument again. Now, I'm going to move on to something else more interesting. <laughs> and that is the scientist. That's Aristoteles. That's Isaac Newton, that's Madame Curie, that is brilliance, and every baby does it. And what is the baby told? Don't, don't. Yes, don't. Don't touch. Don't play. Don't daydream. Stop fiddling. Don't move. Sit down. Shut up. Listen to me. I am the boss. Okay. <laughs> and then we wonder why these 15-year-old kids walk around like this. <laughs> because they've been beaten up mentally. So we now know that that's how the brain works. It's radiant. It's scientific. And therefore, we're going to say to that child, it's now five years old, six years old, seven years old, we're going to say, take notes. How are you going to take notes? How are you going to take notes? Pen and paper, pens and paper. So you use your equipment. I carry this around. This is my The magic wand. That is color. And when you use color in your notes, you remember everything better. You create faster. You enjoy it more. You reduce stress. And so, that's a mind map. That's what a mind map is. You just build it. And how many branches can you add? 
unlimited, infinite. So you immediately know that the human brain is by definition infinitely capable of creating, adding, exploring, growing the universe of its knowledge and wisdom. Could you use any spoken language on that? Could you put Hindi on there? Could you put Russian on there? Could you put Arabic there? Anyone, because the human language embraces every other subroutine spoken language. That's a mind map of the brain, and tomorrow I'll go into that in detail and why. The road ahead. Bill Gates, how intelligent agents and mind mappers are taking our information democracy to the next stage. And that is actually what is now happening. And therefore, that standard, the Great Pyramids, and you've got to read it. That's from text material. That's the same information. Which one would you rather have? <laughs> Ta-da! So it answers all your questions anyway. That is the brain cell. How many of those do you have? <laughs> millions of millions of millions. And they're reflecting the shape of thinking. And therefore, I'm ending on big questions to you. Who is that? Al Gore, when he was vice president and running the environmental movement that he is head of. What is uh, fascinating in that picture? picture? Hold on. That's the mind map. The mind map above his head in his giant office. He runs everything with mind maps. And in his books, every chapter has a mind map of it. The, leading, the leaders of mind map nations, that is obviously Fox, <clears throat> Mexico. He won the entire election using mind maps. And he ran the entire government. And every minister had to use mind maps. Mahatia, how old is he? 92. And about 20 years ago, just before he retired, he said to everybody in the nation, make sure you learn to mind map, learn how to, how to read, learn how to create. That's the future. And now that he's back in office, he's saying the same thing. The same thing. So leaders, mind map nations, and you are the leaders of your movements and become leaders, you can become leaders of a lot more. And human resource has to have a head director on every board of every company because human resource is the prime resource. What's more valuable? Some oil? Some gold? Some diamonds? Some lead? What about some brains? Human resource. China. China, that is my maps done by leaders in China, having my maps in every province, my mapping out everything in each one of those provinces. Oh, who's that? My map nations, my map nation. Modi wrote that book, Exam Warriors, saying to all the kids, listen kids, you know, learn how to learn. Be a warrior with exams. Learn how to study, learn how to think. And in the middle of the book, he says, my map. And he tells every child 
in India, 700 million of them. <clears throat> when you finish my mapping, share it with your study buddies and also see their mind maps for a fresh perspective. So wildfire, every child, and that's human resource. So we are now in a new future. And in India, you've got a leader who's saying, listen kids, if you mind map, everything's easier for you. You have more fun. Use color. Have key ideas. So I leave you with what the new scientist said in your future. And the future for you, as you now increasingly see, is <laughs> welcome to technology. Because there is a slide missing, <laughs> which is actually a really good ending because it's the brain, not technology. We get stuck in a digital age and people duh, 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 duh. use your brain. So although the slide is not there, the slide that is not there fills in this blank. It fills it in. And the global survey from all the scientists around the world said our future, what do you think they said? Unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. I wish that it were my maps. I put it there, but, but it, it wasn't my map. It was no limits no limits to the human race. And that's the human resource. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great delight to have spent this amount of time with you. <laughs> and I'll be with you tomorrow, 11-ish, uh, 11 tomorrow morning, and it'll be an hour and a half workshop, delving into all of this and give you, giving you more information in this area and there'll be question and answer time as well. So thank you, Human Resource. We know you're limitless. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Vizank, and we have a huge round of applause. <laughs> what a fantastic way to end day one of Tech HR 2018. Tony, thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're going to collect all those for me, yes, wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of People Matters Tech HR 2018, powered by Skillsoft Day 1.